Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I am sure that more people will join us, but we're going to start now because it's a little bit late. Uh, my name is Marta Fernandez de Alarcón. I am the Secretary General of the Spanish Business Council, and I want to welcome you to this webinar about the implementation of sustainability plans in the hospitality industry, crafted and presented by Cadira with Junca Juncal Marcellán, one of our members of the chamber. We have also the collaborations uh, in this roundtable of all the important members of the chamber who are leading the way in sustainability within the hospitality sector. These members are Dukes de Palm Hotel, Melia Hotels International, NH Collection de Palm and Rich Carlton Abu Dhabi. I am delighted to present today for this webinar these amazing experts from these different hotels. <coughs> uh, they are Go Gobinat, Gopinath Chandran, Gopinath, yeah. sorry, Gopinath no Chandran, Food Hygiene Health and Safety Manager of Dukes de Palm, Rodrigo Molina, Head of Operations and Finance Business uh, Partner, Middle East, Africa and Greece from Elia Hotels International, <laughs> Tushara Aranake, Director of Engineering of, uh, from NH Collection Dubai de Palm, Bipin Chandram, Environment, Health and Safety Management manag Manager from Bridge Carlton Abu Dhabi. And, and I want to say thank you for the collaboration and support of all of you. Always very support, supportive and, and in our, all our purpose from September. As you may know, the Spanish Business Council is an international community with very valuable members with the Spanish companies and also from all the countries. Uh, one of our main purposes from the Chamber is to be an international community and create a, a platform with all our members and um, uh, an amazing place uh, where, where all of, uh, of our members uh, can share ideas, uh, can make uh, networking, can find collaborations and, and make businesses in the UAE. So I don't want to rest time to our speakers, so let's start. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank SBC and the entire team for organizing this event, as well for continuing this open conversation on sustainability. The objective of today's session is to be as interactive as possible. There will be some guided questions, but um, if our speakers feel that they need to add something um, additional, I'm welcome. So for the audience, please feel free to send your questions for the speakers and the speakers feel free to talk as open as, as you can be. Um, we will start the session with a brief introduction of sustainability and industry trends. Um, I will then introduce the speakers very briefly. There will be a couple of questions that will be direct to all the speakers and others that will be direct to certain panelists. Um, so each uh, panelist uh, will have around five minutes to answer each question just for the interest of time. Um, so anyway, so welcome everybody. So now I'm going to try to, to share my screen, but in the meantime, I will want to introduce myself. My name is Juncal, as Marta said, I'm Australian. I'm a co-founder of Cadira, which is a sustainability advisory firm. And we basically help companies to define the ESG the strategy and implementation. Here, um, yeah, perfect. So here, um, Kadira, uh, so I didn't mention, um, there is another co-founder that her name is Esther Dachman. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. So you just have to deal with me today. Hope you enjoy the session. So as I said before, I will um, talk about some industry trends. I will give some of the instructions, even though I have already done it. And, and we will start our discussion for today. So uh, sustainability is a new disruptor. Um, like technology was a few years back, technology is a new disruptor and it's here to stay. And we are in a pivoting moment. So whether firms, companies, organizations want to, to start now, but it's something everybody is going to have to do. And we are shifting from a shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism where everybody is, in, is involved. In a recent survey by Ipsos, it was very interesting because in the MENA region, um, there is a concern on environment, not as high as I would like, 
but it's good news. Um, also, um, the UAE is the country in the MENA region where individuals rec recognize that environmental is, is a concern. So what are businesses doing? So businesses are basically uh, focusing on the ESG strategies or ESG reporting. Um, why ESG? Because it, it's the natural evolution of the environmental health and safety. Also, um, it's easier to, to change your operations or to craft your operation on ESG um, and to inform stakeholders. And also investors want to see your ESG reporting. And as you know, some of the listed companies in, in the UAE is mandatory that you have an ESG report. Um, and they, it's really easy for them to adopt this ESG guideline into the sustainability plan. So at the moment that you're crafting a sustainability plan, you look at these ESG guidelines that, as we know, focus on environment, social, and governance. But lately, it has been a little bit more focused in the past, I would say, and I have noticed three months, more on the environmental part, where companies are more focused on that net zero initiative, on becoming carbon neutral. Um, particularly in this region, there is been um, a lot of talk lately. I have been in a lot of meetings due to COP28 coming soon to our doors. Um, they are talking about carbon ratings. They are co co talking about carbon registry. Um, so I think in the new few next months, we will be seeing a lot of shift towards that. A lot of com companies trying to calculate their carbon and trying to find this net zero. So what is happening in the industry, well, in the hospitality industry, that sustain sustainability has become an important threat. So they try, the hotels try to have energy efficiency by LED lighting, smart thermostat, you leave the room, um, the AC stops working, solar panels, and trying to reduce that consumption footprint. On waste reduction, hotels that have done, oh, sorry, sorry, I just, by mistake, sorry about that. Um, by waste reduction, um, other hotels are adopting um, strategies as implementing recycling programs, giving food to charities that they have leftovers. Um, on local sourcing, they have realized that actually having suppliers that are locally become cheaper, become more reliable for them, and at the same time, they are becoming more sustainable. They are also trying to have some water conservation. Uh, so they have different implementation process, like they have low flow of in the shower. Um, they have irrigation system with um, recycling water. Um, and they try to reuse, as we know, if you have been in a hotel recently, um, towels and linen. Um, so the one of the things about the green building practices, and I have been also in a lot of meetings, what is happening is like, when are they are actually building the new hotels, this is something that they already know. They are adopting environmental friendly materials. They are thinking about putting solar planners, uh, how it's going to be renewable energy. The issue becomes with the old hotels. What are they doing to hotels that have were built maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago? So now there are a lot of companies that they are trying to, to sell to these hotels. Okay, we will refurbish you, we will put you ACs that are more efficient, we can put solar panels, we can put this material. Um, and this is a new trend that um, I have been seeing lately in some of these meetings I have been attending on sustainability in the UAE. Also, hotels are providing sustainable transportation, not even not also uh, electric cars, but also telling clients um, offering like for example, a bike or scooters or eco-friendly basically transportation options. We know about the eco-friendly amenities, and one of the important things is community engagement. A lot of hotels are being um, engaging into the community, helping them to do sustainability initiatives like beach cleanups or um, activities within the hotel to support sustainability. So this is one 
of the latest trends that, but if we realize and we look at these slides, we realize that, okay, when we are talking about natural design, sustainability and ecotourism and health and food and beverage, all these three items are very linked to sustainability, right? And a smart technology too, technology gives us the option to be more sustainable. And on the local front, um, as we know, there are a lot of certifications that um, businesses and hotels can get on sustainability. But the Dubai Sustainability Tourism um, created this stamp that recognizes the hotels that adhere to the highest sustainability standards. Um, they have 19 requirements and there are three different tiers and is an independent accreditation. So the hotels will have a tick that says, okay, I'm gold. So it means that I'm very sustainable. So now I would like to introduce briefly, I'm not going to read all of this to our um, speakers. So here we have from NHS collection hotels that they just opened a hotel in Japan, um, which is to be one of the champions on sustainability has 17 years experience uh, in chemical tankers. And during these times, he dealt with numerous government audits for the environmental cost. And then he moved to hospitality sector with a focus on safety and security. Um, so his projects have included shoes treatment plants, overseeing um, horticulture activities and contributing immensely on the plantation of elver gardens in hotels. Um, then we have Bipin Chandran, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Again, the Ritz Carlos is one also one sustainability champion hotel that has been in the UAE for a long time, um, which they have developed and implemented a sustainability strategy in their operations. And they have KPIs to reduce water usage and energy consumption, among others. He has 12 years of experience in managing the environment and sustainability projects. Um, as well as he's an auditor in ISO 14001. Um, he has led a project or in-house water bottling in the Ritz. The Ritz also has a vertical garden, uh, green key certification project. And yes, and they are doing um, really well on the sustainability plans. Um, then we have Opinat Chandran. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. I really apologize for that. <laughs> um, from the Duke's Hotel, also in the farm. It seems all the sustainability hotels are in the farm lately. Um, but they have implemented some policies and practices. Also is an ISO certified. And they have some KPIs. And I believe some a sustainability strategy that they're implementing in the moment. Um, he worked for a pharmaceutical company, um, which is very interesting for me, how someone that was in microbiology biology ended up working for the hospitality industry, but I suppose that's something we can talk over coffee one day. Um, but he's a um, certified trainer of food and safety, and, yeah, and I'm waiting to hear um his comments today. Finally, we have Rodrigo Molina from Melia. Melia Group is a champion hotel also on sustainability. They have the Travel for Wood, which is the program where um, they basically are um, embedding the ASG strategy in the all-day hotels. So not even on the environmental side, more on the social. They, they focus on sustainability tourism. They if they open um, a hotel in Zanzibar, they make sure they connect with the locals and the community is all involved in that development. But I'm sure he will tell us more about it. Um, so Rodrigo has a lot of experience in the Middle East, Europe, and he has been 20 years and supervises operations in, in all the Middle East hotels in Middle East, Africa. And I think, I don't know why I've read someone in, in Greece, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, and yes, and as you can see, they, they just have, um, uh, they open Melias in the Serengeti, for example, which uh, has been an UNESCO World Heritage Site. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So 
I can focus on the panelists and everybody can see the panelists. Um, the first question is going to go for the four of them. And, you know, just um, then the other ones I'm going to directly to, to each of you. But if one of you wants to participate, as I said before, an answer or add some other comment, you are more than welcome. So the first question today is, what are the ESG and sustainability strategies that your hotel has adopted? So it's not what is in the plan, it's what have we adopted um, already? What has been already implemented? So I don't know who wants to go first. Pipin, you want to go first? I take yeah, this one. Oh. Yes, you can go first. Yes, yeah, fine. Yeah, Gobi, Gobi, if you want yeah. to take off, no worries. Go on. <laughs> no issues. You know, uh, thank you uh, for inviting me for this wonderful uh, uh, webinar. Uh, if you look at the uh, environmental management system and the sustainability concept, um, if you look at like, we can split like a two part. One is like you know, before 2000 and after the 2000. So before 2000, we had very less um, talk about uh, environmental sustainability and sustainability programs uh, because like hospitality industry was not booming up and after 2000 um, you know hospitality industry started growing up drastically you know since then many properties had been adopted uh, environmental sustainability programs um, and then like you no know, many organizations and uh, an EAG set up standards and other uh, uh, like you no know, environmental management system standards um, adopted by the company's top management and other stakeholders to measure the company's long-term um, impact on the environmental and the society. So if you look at, so when we see this uh, environmental management system um, uh, uh, in the globe, uh, like you no, know, uh, so that's the reason like you now we, uh, we had a, a severe uh, commitment from the uh, top management as well as our leadership uh, from the uh, Barcelona Hotel. Uh, uh, if you look at like you now our leadership, like you now Duke's the Palm Hotel, um, general manager is very keen on implementing these sustainability programs. Um, of course, like you know, it's benefit for our company, benefit for our uh, customers. So our main focus on uh, to see like you now how we can uh, reduce the carbon emissions and the carbon footprint. So there are some key components. Uh, when we did the initial uh, setup of the standards, so we had a conversations, how we can reduce the carbon emissions. So we put a lot of the standards and SOPs discussions on the table, and then we come up with uh, some idea to have uh, kind of like a standards. Uh, the main focus on energy conservations and the water conservations on four and the food waste reductions and recycling program. Uh, so these are the key component to reduce the carbon emissions. And successfully, like you now we had uh, implemented the energy conservations, water conservations, and food waste reductions, and a recycling program. So this way, like you now it it helped our uh, uh, our 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 cost uh, spending on uh, this component. And also, like we took the pledge on the eliminating the uh, plastic uh, single use plastics and the takeaway containers. And also like now we had uh, uh, the guest discussions, like the educations on the Lenin and the towel usage program. So how we can reduce the Lenin usage and the towel uh, usage by educating the guest. And uh, we have also like air quality monitoring. Um, as you know that our hotel has 100% uh, smoke free hotel rooms. So we didn't have like any smoking rooms in the uh, uh, Duke's the Palm Hotel. Uh, and we do have air quality measures to give the health environment for our uh, valuable customers. And any any product that we buy, especially like the chemicals, we buy the chemicals from the approved suppliers. So we look for the eco labels and biodegradable and ecological friendly, ensure that it is not uh, uh, polluted our oceans or or, or our land. And also like the main part is like employees training. So we educate our employees to follow the um, all our practice that we put in place. And of course, like you know, we do a lot of CSR activities. Uh, the CSR activities, including like a lot of community activities. 
Um, so how we engage with the local communities, how we engage with uh, our customers to, to reveal our program to the world. Um, especially like you now when we have a beach cleanup, we partnered with the EEG, Emirates uh, 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 Environmental Group. And also like you now we do have a participation of the lot of uh, uh, initiatives in the uh, uh, properties along with the customers' participations. Uh, if you look at the uh, energy conservations, so we do have Earth Earth with the participation of customers. So who are really willing to participate to reduce the carbon emissions to switch off the unnecessary lights. So these are the initiatives and these are the uh, sustainability strategies we put in place in our uh, hotel. So this is just yeah. brief about our hotel, how to suggest sort of practice. Very good. I'm glad so to see that. Yeah, I'm glad to see If you would like to add, yeah. Keeping, anyone wants to like add, to add something? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, uh, thanks for this platform. It's really, it's really uh, uh, interesting to understand that the sustainability trend is is in the right direction and it is it is going well, uh, uh, especially in in United Arab Emirates. Uh, okay, I just want to echo uh, what uh, Mr. Gopi has said. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, from my experience, what I found is like uh, all the hotels. Uh, or most of the uh, sectors are uh, really focusing on waste segregation, uh, you know, uh, food waste reduction and all those things. But I would like to say that, you know, when we when we focus on sustainability, it is it is really important that we focus more on energy. Uh, I think Mr. Tushar will also agree to me uh, uh, because energy uh, is the area where we really uh, lack attention. Uh, because I want to tell you that when we went for a, a level two ashra energy audit, and that's the area when we really did the calculation to understand that, you know, how much uh, carbon emission or how much energy, especially uh, Ritz-Carlton is a, is a luxury uh, hotel. And uh, honestly speaking, the when we really study on how much resource we are using uh, for our guests in this business, it's really, uh, I mean, not acceptable. I would honestly say that one. So uh, if you focus on energy, uh, how to conserve energy and what are the, um, and also the water. And that's the, that's the key thing, you know, will give a, a really uh, good result. Uh, uh, when we start with sustainability. And I think, I think the, uh, I mean, uh, when we, uh, when I have to say about the key sustainability initiatives that we have developed here, uh, I find it most interesting with the vertical farm that we have here. Uh, because when, when we generally speak about sustainability, everyone thinks that, you know, it's uh, more expensive, you know. I do agree that, you know, uh, there needs some investment uh, when we move forward with sustainability, but there are certain things that we can do without investment also. I would like to give this as an example. Our vertical farm, we did it in our premise with zero investment uh, because we have a, uh, we found out a supplier uh, who did it for us. The only thing is that we were uh buying all these green products from from outside instead of that <clears throat> we have to buy these products from them so they make it in-house here they do everything they do all the setup uh, there is no transportation our chefs go outside get whatever they need they measure and uh, they weigh it and they give to us they charge us and we pay them so these kind of initiatives really helps in uh, uh, like developing sustainability initiatives and managing that without investment as well. But when it comes to energy also, there are so many companies, uh, kind of retrofit uh, kind of concept is there in the, in the market, uh, which works on profit sharing and all those things. So those are also an option for uh, developing sustainability, I believe. Okay, well, um... You allow me from my side, um, I would like to briefly explain the um, 
and the sustainable practices that Melia has implemented uh, and give you a few examples of uh, the things that we are doing. Um, for us, it's very important, not only the, the environment, but also the, the social aspect of sustainability and the governance of the company. Um, so we have three different areas to sustainability, which is good for the planet, good for the people and the community, and uh, good governance in, in terms of dealing with suppliers, dealing with the authorities, and so on. Um, with regards to the planet, the, the, the practices that we have, obviously, is, uh, as we discussed, sustainable construction, depending on the location, we choose the materials, uh, trying to, to choose uh, the more sustainable uh, local materials and trying to reduce the carbon footprint of the company. Uh, energy efficiency, of course, we talk about it. We have uh, hotels uh, with LED lights, solar panels, electrical golf carts, uh, and so on. This is uh, something which is very standard. Then we have water management measures. Uh, one hotel that uh, we manage, uh, we are having an ecological salt chlorination system, which is uh, quite good as uh, it reduces a lot the consumption of water of the swimming pool. And uh, we believe that it's very important, the circularity, uh, recycling uh, waste. So we have compost plants uh, to be able to reuse the, the compost uh, uh, for growing trees, uh, reuse soap, uh, and so on. And uh, biodiversity also, we have uh, in some hotels, um, for example, a sanctuary for uh, uh, hatching turtles and, and protecting endangered species. You know. This uh, is with regards with the planet. Uh, in, in terms of the people and the community, uh, what we do in, in our hotels um, with our employees uh, to, to promote the, the training, development uh, with uh, dynamic learning and digital skills. Uh, but also, we want to promote equality and uh, try to help the community by employing uh, vulnerable, vulnerable people. You know, for us, it's very important to engage with the communities uh, in the hotels that we operate to have uh, a lot of uh, local staff. It's important to develop the community that you go, not just uh, to do a hotel in a remote location for uh, wealthy international clients, but to, to bring back something to the community by providing them uh, jobs. And doing also a lot of cooperation with uh, non-government organizations. Um, we have, for example, programs to, to help uh, the education of children, in communities and to provide also um, food chase soap from local uh, women cooperatives and, and similar practices. Yeah. And then uh, with regards to the um, um, to the governance of the company, because we are a, a company that we are in the Spanish stock market, uh, we need to report uh, our AEC report annually, and uh, we are complying currently with uh, 78 percent of the recommended practices of the. Uh, Spanish uh, governance body for the stock market, the, the Comisión Nacional del Mercado de Valores. Um, we also believe that it's very important to have a, a responsible supply chain. So we have developed, and this is implemented in, in all our hotels, not just in, in this region that I manage, but, but in some others, uh, a code of ethics for suppliers, where uh, we have many suppliers on board um, and uh, they are adhering to human rights policies, sustainable development, uh, child protection, and, and similar uh, good practices, which are part of our culture and our code of ethics. And then also we we have, um, we, we promote the dialogue with authorities to, to increase the sustainable tourism, to promote it, and to see how we can cooperate to, to make uh, the tourism a, a more sustainable place and, and to improve the perception of, of tourism in, in every country that we operate. Michelle, you want to, to share, you want to say anything? Or is, to yeah, share, yeah. Would, you like, would you like to say a few words briefly? Oh, yeah. First of all, uh, thank you very much uh, for organizing this webinar. I must appreciate the Spanish Business Council that uh, they are in, uh, in tune with the sustainable practices and they are committed for organizing such kind of things, uh, which definitely will create impact. And uh, thanks for you know, inviting the hospitality uh, specialist, I would say, because uh, if you really see, uh, we are coming from the part of the world, especially in Nagadar Emirates, where the energy was easily available. And nowadays, 
uh, it is proven that <clears throat> if we don't take care of what we consume, then what we give to our future generation will be at the question mark. So no matter how much you are rich in terms of uh, energy resources, in terms of availability, you still have to really think differently, think out of the box ideas to reduce your impact on the, on the environment. So Dubai government is actually doing a lot in terms of, uh, you know, uh, this GAT-19 requirements in different, different sectors. And in tune with that, I would say any hotel, actually it, it works in four phases. So first of all, what you have available where you are operating in the region, region-wise, what is the availability? Then based on that, what construction material you are using? I mean, Rodrigo also touched a little bit on that. I mean, what kind of uh, uh, facade you have, how, how you avoid the heat transfer, how you select a very uh, economical or high energy rated equipments for your different, different applications, how do you implement solar panels itself, or how do you uh, introduce a very high efficient kitchen equipments during the construction stage itself, how do you have the, uh, 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 the panels, the, the glass panels, which will not really transfer the uh, sunlight inside and uh, keep the area uh, as much as cool possible. There are bricks available nowadays, uh, which has got insulation in between, and uh, that's quite uh, useful uh, in, the, in those things. So that's about the construction. Then hotel goes into the uh, operation stage, whereby all things come in place. I mean, how you reduce your carbon impact, how you handle your waste, you know, how you handle your procurement chain, whereby how do you harness maximum local products, thereby uh, reducing the impact on the transportation? Uh, there are certain species, uh, in, in especially in fishing industry, uh, uh, which are at stake of danger, at, at the stage of isolation. I mean, how you select your product and how do you sell those products uh, in, the, in the hotel? Uh, we, 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 we here in uh, NH Collection have introduced actually even vacant rooms and uh, uh, it's a new concept, uh, I would say, uh, which is driving a lot. Selection of mattress, selection of pillows, selection of duvet. It is all eco-friendly, not only eco-friendly, but there is no animal product which goes uh, in, the, in the selection of these things. Uh, in terms of operational things uh, or in conjunction with the construction and operation, we have uh, many pressure handling units which are producing a lot of condensed water. And that condensed water generally it is best, but but we can't use it in the in the main uh, uh, tanks because you don't have the control on that. So we are using this water in uh, plantation. I mean, in, in uh, giving the irrigation water basically. So it is hardly any irrigation water that we take from government agencies, and all this water is actually getting fulfilled from this. Uh, then new trend is coming up in the, in the in the hospitality. I would say it is about the sewage treatment plants, whereby you don't actually, uh, it's, it's zero discharge properties. The property where I was working before, it was a remote place in Pujara, it is intercontinental Pujara Resort, my previous property, where we had sewage treatment plant and huge horticulture we had. We had even the, uh, I would say, uh, like 17 acres property, sort of uh, in areas, and all water, black water, waste water, everything was getting recycled. And we were using all that water for the, for the horticulture, which is something quite uh, new. And then comes to the renovation of the hotels because there are four phases, you know, pre-construction, construction, you operate the hotel. During the operation also, you think about hotel a lot and then comes to the renovation. So during renovation also, how do you recycle all the materials that were going to destroy? That there has to be a proper chain. Through the chain, you, uh, you know, uh, uh, dispose the material. So there are various steps in the in the, in the hotel uh, life cycle, I would say, whereby the okay. sustainability matters a lot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you, Tushar. Thank you. So now I'm going just to thank you for all of you. It was um, just playing really well almost. I don't know if I can ask any more questions because I think you answer almost everything. But let's go to details, a little bit of details. Um, I will direct this question to someone of the panelists, but if... Um, that someone else wants to add something very quickly for the interest of time, that will be great. 
So um, uh, the first question um, I think I would like Bipin from the rates to answer is how can hotels and resorts effectively reduce the carbon footprint and energy consumption? Like give three, four tips, you know, how to do it efficiently. Okay, uh, the the first thing uh, I think uh, what we have to do is that we need to have a, a, a asset KPI. Uh, what we are going to uh, achieve, uh, like what percent are you going to reduce? Because it's really important that where we are focusing on. And based on that, you plan uh, what you have to do. Uh, so for that, uh, let's say, for example, uh, our hotel has set the uh, 38% uh, reduction by 2025. That that's the standard that yeah. we said. So how aggressive the uh, the the set point is, then accordingly, we involve the owners and uh, we have to go for a, a an energy audit uh, that that will show you like which are the areas where we can maybe replacing the uh, the air conditioning units, uh, which is you know. Uh, uh, five years old or maybe from pre-opening uh, of the hotel so uh, changing into a new star rated things and uh, we run a, 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 a huge laundry operation for example and we are we are serving uh, we are taking the laundry from other four hotels as well so uh, and honestly speaking our uh, laundry equipments are like more than five years old so replacing it with uh, a new star rated you know five star rated uh, things uh, will really boost up the uh, energy saving uh, options. Uh, but uh, honestly saying, uh, you know, most of the hotels in UAE has gone through this uh, LED lights and, uh, yeah. and things. But one thing which lacks is uh, application or use of uh, alternative energy like solar yeah. panel. How many hotels in UAE are using solar panels? It's yeah. very less. So yeah. this alternative energy also will add up to the uh, carbon reduction in carbon emission and the uh, energy saving uh, process yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I actually recently met two companies on the same um, actually conference that they they focus on the clients are hotels and they basically come and say, okay, we will change your AC unit. Right. Um, so this is going to do, you know, it's not going to cost you anything, but all the savings you get, right, from now on, 50% will be us and 50% exactly. and the contract for 10 years, right, or 20 years, you know, they, they decide you negotiate. So there are companies out here right now that they are doing that, right? They are saying, okay, this is not going to cost you anything initially. You will only have to give me 50% of your savings, right? Um, yeah. So there are ways. And on the solar front, I think we're getting better. And I was actually analyzing the other day for other purposes, the the energy that we consume in the UAE. So there were the all the solar panels that you see, right, uh, is part of our grid. So the electricity grid that we are using in the UAE right now, I don't want to, I don't remember now the percentage, but I would say at least 12, 13% comes from solar energy which you know it's kind of good it should be 100 percent because we have a lot of sun right so one will say why we don't have 100 percent but maybe that's the objective right um i think the uae um governor governor and um everybody's having a lot of pressure on reducing that consumption of electricity and becoming more um energy efficient due to the fact that we are great polluters, you know, and and to to arrive to the net zero goal that the UAE has for 250, 2050, sorry. Um, so anyway, thank you very much. Next question will be um, directly to, to Shard from um, NH Hotels. Uh, NH Hoteles in Spanish. So it's what the strategies and practice have you adopted to manage and reduce waste so if you could give us two or three tips on your waste reduction and management plan will be great so uh, it is quite a common practice actually to do the uh, uh, recycling in terms of what you produce so you basically have a, you need to be in touch with different different companies who take care of uh, different different waste for example e-waste which comprises basically 
electronic components, in terms of computer parts, in terms of batteries that you change every year, and that has to be very uh, economically has to be disposed. And then there are companies available who are specialists into this. So you have the contract with those companies, and then it is guaranteed that these products are safely disposed. That is one aspect. The second aspect is the segregation in your property, what comes or generated from the guest rooms because it comprises of many things, I would say, plastic, paper, uh, could be bottles. So as much as possible, you segregate and then again, you tie up with the company who will take and you know take and uh, uh, do the segregation at their end as well. So there are the, these are the two major aspects of the, of the uh, waste, I would say. In terms of food waste, also, uh, although farm uh, where we are located has limited option, but the resorts or where you have the uh, big space available, this food waste can be uh, recycled into two things. One is the uh, biofuel, but that is a bit critical. It's not as easy as it is said, but that is one of the options uh, can be explored, explored and on a, on a smaller scale. But again, it needs a lot of technical expertise and it may not be feasible because you may not be producing as much as possible. But yes, the second aspect of that is to convert into uh, uh, what it is called the compost, basically. So the composting is a nice idea whereby if it is not possible for you to consume in your own property, you can at least half compost and tie up with the company to take either they will take free of cost or they will pay you even, you know. So there is... Uh, there is, there is, a, there are chances that you might earn a little bit of money uh, out of this. I think Mr. Molina will be excited because he's from finance, uh, whereby there are some revenue generation uh, possibilities through this. So this is how I would say uh, waste uh, recycling uh, uh, need to be done. Even during renovation, I tell you my experience. In the renovation, uh, rather than eyeing uh, for everything to be commercial or try to get the money out of that, think that. This material, if it is given to the needy person or needy society, needy community, whereby you are creating some housing, you know, for poor people, and you are taking out furniture from your from your rooms, you are disposing those. Just give them because rather than it is going to the junkyard, it is better that some society use it because if, when I have seen when hotels undergo renovation, not that everything is bad. You have good furniture, you have good mattresses, you have good uh, utensils, a uh, lot of good things come out of, out of uh, renovation. Yeah. So that okay. also can look as a recycled one and given to the needed needy community. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So do you, do you um, because I know some hotels work with some charities where they donate like the the food leftover from buffets. In actual fact, there are also other hotels that they are not doing so many buffets well, like we used to, you know, like in the UAE, you used to see all these buffets all the time going on. See, that yeah. is a big complicated uh, scenario, I would say, because food is a very sensitive thing. The left, even though it is leftover, for example, leftover means what? It is there on buffet or it is there for some time. It has seen the weather condition. It has come out of the uh, frozen. Or it, has, it, is, it has been cooked. So bacterial development has already started there. And by the time this leftover food reaches to the needy person, that could be spoiled. That is the main reason why hotels deter from participating in these programs and then they tend to recycle it as a compost or give it to municipality for their disposal. So okay. that is quite sensitive unless you have assurance that this particular food will reach to the needy person in less than two hours, it is okay. Otherwise, it is a bit okay. risky there. I think other panelists will agree on this, uh, you know. Okay, understood. understood. Um, so the next question I would like maybe Gopinath Ashamran from the Duke to answer. Um, so it's, could you give us an example of how your hotel promotes sustainable procurement and supports local suppliers? Uh, well, um, if you look at, uh, so here in UAE, like you know, a lot of challenges, like you know, we face in terms of like suppliers. Uh, when we procure sustainable product or eco-label products and biodegradable products, it it's a bit expensive, right? But compared to other products. Uh, but now the suppliers are like you know, changing their attitudes and also like you know, they are also uh, learning about the demand from the hotel industries, what they are looking for alternatively. Um, if you look at our sustainability plan, we have a partner with the suppliers. So 
we send a lot of uh, information and the policies to the uh, suppliers. Uh, we have to have a, a biodegradable product and eco-friendly product, sustainable product. Uh, uh, so those suppliers who are willing to supply the products to the hotel industry will look for their commitment also. Right, uh, not only like no our commitment, uh, the our commitment not stick with only our hotel industry. So we need to expand our uh, expectations uh, from the suppliers, and uh, and as Tushar said, like now we have a nineteen uh, 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 DTCM uh, uh, the requirement, a sustainability requirement. It is applicable for them also. Like uh, so, whenever they bring any products to the uh, hotel uh, industry, so we look for whether this package is biodegradable or non-biodegradable. So we tell them to bring the biodegradable packaging or less packaging. And also like now we have uh, uh, the life cycle uh, assessment. So whenever we you you buy any product, for example, like cleaning products, when you buy like uh, any uh, housekeeping cleaning product, we see the, uh, the life cycle of the product, whether it's a long stay life uh, or, or it's a short term. Uh, if it is like a short term, we look for the long term. Uh, for example, like when you buy the any machines, so we need to see this machine is lost long for how many years, right? So we don't want to buy the machines which is damaging like within a month. So at the end, like now we are damaging our, our 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 environment and creating the pollutions. And if you look at the chemical, so we need to see like now whether the chemicals are biodegradable chemicals or ecologically friendly chemicals. And also like now we look for the local suppliers. Who are producing the food locally, right? Uh, if you so we set the KPI uh, in in the hotel, like no, since we have the ISO fourteen thousand certifications, we set the KPI and the objectives each and every department. So when you when you talk about like a food procurement, so we look for local suppliers who are uh, producing locally uh, to avoid the carbon emission, carbon footprint, and we have three percent local produce items in the hotel. And also like we give the healthy options to the customer also. So we educate the guests that this product is made from the local produce items. Um, and also like now we ask the suppliers uh, any, so we have a clear criteria in the uh, procurement uh, department. So whenever you buy any equipment to see the equipment's life cycle and uh, whether it's uh, energy saving and the water saving. So we do the lot of assessment uh, like now we are changing and we are moving forward to the more sustainable manner. Um, at the end, uh, we need to reduce the cost of our operations and our, also like now we need to think about our environment for future. Yeah, obviously, like always, it comes to the economics, like here, like that's that's the big debate, you know, everybody wants to be sustainable, but no one wants to 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 increase their cost, right? So it's finding that balance that is important you know, to find. And in here, in your case, also is quality, right? Like, so you have to make sure that even your local suppliers are providing you the same quality as the international suppliers. Um, but I have seen a change. I mean, even as a con uh, on my side, as a consumer, I go now to the supermarket and I can see that, you know, I have vegetables that are locally grown, right? And I try and I have the tendency to consume those because... Well, price was usually cheaper, and second, um, it's more sustainable, and the taste is much better because it have That's not right. been kind of frozen. And I'm talking on the vegetable side, obviously, cleaning products and other yeah. items. It's not a matter of that. But yeah, thank you for your input. No, even no, even if you look at the government, the government also encouraging the local suppliers to come up with to have like a more. Uh, hydrophonic, uh, like a forming, uh, even like no. So we do visit a lot of local suppliers to see their quality, how they are growing up in the uh, high, like no hydrophonic way, temperature control way to see whether it is uh, like no suitable for our operations. And of course, like no, we have all the discussions with the suppliers. They know our demand and they know about the local uh, sustainability activities. And of course, like no, uh, they have to fulfill our requirement, and we need to. Uh, develop the local community as well. Looking forward to seeing more local suppliers, hopefully bringing the economy up in the UAE, um, apart from the oil industry and tourism. <laughs> there is some manufacturing happening. Um, anyway, uh, the following question I would like to direct it to Rodrigo from Melia. 
So if you could tell me one of example of a successful uh, sustainability practice of implementation from your hotel change, like one that for you strikes and says like that was um, our champion on sustainability when we implemented this, it when it's mostly the results have been what we wanted only even better. Would you think yeah. of any, Rodrigo? Yes, I mean, um, uh, we have uh, in our region, uh, we have few hotels which are very sustainable um, because we have, uh, I think it's very important to, to think about sustainability at the moment of building the hotel. And yeah. it's uh, very important because if you made a mistake at that, at that point and the facade is uh, wrong, made of glass or not properly insulated, yeah. you cannot correct it later or it, or it costs a lot of money. So in that sense, um, I would like to give the example of the property that we have in the in a national park in Serengeti. Um, because of the location, we need to think of sustainability very early because uh, this property, you don't have electricity from the government, uh, you don't have water from the government. So you are really, really far away and you are in a, in a location where what you are selling to the client is an experience of mm. the nature, the animals, and sustainability itself. So you don't want to be uh, using generators and using all the time petrol uh, to, uh, <laughs> to have energy in the hotel because then the experience, what you are selling and what you are doing is completely the opposite. So what the, the first thing we did is we choose the location of the hotel in, in a hill. So we could uh, build it uh, with uh, local stone and we could build it uh, also using the wind uh, to minimize the AC units in the hotel. So the, the, the hotel is uh, sustained at a, at a good temperature by, by choosing that location. Um, to avoid bringing uh, bottles of water from the city, we have four boreholes and we have built a water bottling plant where we have our own uh, um, still and sparkling water. This is part of the experience with the, all the clients. We take them to the bottling plant, we show them how to do it uh, and so on. Uh, we have also the solar panels, of course, to, to have the um, to use at least part of the energy for the uh, for the water heaters as much as possible. Uh, and then we are also um, planting trees, uh, making sure that when we build the hotel, we didn't take any tree. We just remove them and put them somewhere else. But we we were not allowed to cut trees in that location. And uh, we have also a compost plant. So basically, it's a hotel which uh, 70, 80 percent it's uh, it's uh, sustainable with zero carbon footprint. We still have to use some petrol for the cars of the safaris. Obviously, it's <laughs> this is unavoidable. But the hotel itself, it's uh, it's incredibly sustainable. Well, it's in my bucket list to go to Serengeti. So let me know. I'll and, uh, for sure. for sure. <laughs> you'll, my you'll, bucket you'll, list. you'll enjoy it. You'll, you'll really yeah. enjoy it. Okay. Thank you, Rodrigo. It's amazing. Um, I love seeing hotels like this, by the way, where they adapt instead of going and building a big thing, they just adapt to to the region. And the, I mean, we adapt to the environment. Absolutely, everything. The soap comes from a, a local community. Uh, we employ for security um, Maasai. Yeah, Maasai. Okay. So, I mean, they are the ones who are on the scale of the animals, so they are. <laughs> <laughs> so we you are will be a, a lot of local people. We have good relation with the um, with the community, and we buy vegetables from uh, from the closest from the closest village, which is like fifty kilometers away, because the the real the, the closest city as such is Arusa, which is seven hours away by car. So we yeah. cannot we cannot do that. We That's cannot. Cool. Uh, Fantastic. I, I, I will I will have to go now. <laughs> I have to think sure. <laughs> when but I cannot wait. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo. Um, so the following question, sorry, Rodrigo, don't go because I would like Rodrigo and Bipin from Melian Reads um, because they are the big change there uh, on sustainability. Um, and maybe they can, it's more important for me to understand, we understood what are your plans and how you did it, but I'm sure down the way you found challenges Okay, and implementing and maintaining these sustainability plans. So if you could briefly think about which challenges you are currently facing, okay, implementing, for example, in your case that, you know, carbon 
neutrality, you know, that you want to achieve, Pippin or, you know, um, Rodrigo. I don't know which challenge you will be facing because it seems your, all your strategy is on ESG and on your hotels. But I mean, I'm sure you can say, look, you know, maybe it's uh, the governments that we enter into into different regions or, you know, cause related or maybe educating your employees, you know, because sometimes you have the plan there, the strategy, but is how you transfer that information to your employees, you know, to the change of human capital that hotels have. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, I think uh, in terms of challenges, I, I have identified two, two main challenges. Um, one of them is that generally when, when you want to implement a, a sustainability plan, especially coming from where we come from, that the sustainability 20 years ago was not as important as it is now, and many hotels are old, um, it requires investment. So when you require investment, uh, um, owners and people generally ask, I already have a chiller, I already have the AC machines, yeah. I have this, I have that, why do I have to invest? In that sense, um, you need to really show a return of investment in the long term, but for many people, it's difficult to think long term, like, oh, in 10 years. Like uh, invest, like yeah, I know I will get money in ten years, but now I have to give up a lot of money. So we need to be um, creative in that sense and, and use companies like uh, I mean, we are in discussion with one company to provide us solar panels. They do the installation, they do the maintenance, they do everything, and then they calculate the, the kilowatts that they are the solar panels are generating, and they sell it to you cheaper than the one. So they yeah. say. You save money without cost. We put it in the roof. You have the roof of the hotel. We recover our, our investment because we are the ones putting the money by doing this way. So this is one of the ways to, to overcome this challenge of the investment. And I think that the second challenge, which I commented also before, is that the prior errors that are uh, the mistakes that are made uh, at the inception of the project. When they don't think about sustainability, the construction is wrong, uh, the circularity of products, uh, the kitchens, the designs are wrong, and then you need to correct something which requires a lot of effort and, and convincing uh, people that that it, you really need to change it. You know, you really need to yeah to improve and cost you more at the end. You know, that's what we tell yes. our clients. Like in our sense, it's different. We're helping set up, set up all these operations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are SMEs, and we always say, do it right now because. You do the process now, now right, and means that in two years when you want to be sustainable, you don't have to go back, delete everything you have done, and restart. So even if you are not going to achieve it now because you don't have the budget, just put all your, you know, procedures in place, you know, all your code of conduct and all your regulations that you want, and then you decide what you implement and how and with a timing manner. Because it's very important to to plan it first. To have this culture so so you don't miss it to all the planification and all the actions that need to be done and and there are currently studies that shows that people also take sustainability in consideration when going on holidays so all these activities are also important because the clients are, are valuing them so it's something yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Every, every time it's being, yeah every time it's being more valued by consumers you know because you think well i'm traveling but i I choose a hotel that is has a sustainability program, you know. Um, I don't know if Vipin wants to add anything at this point. Um, uh, yes, uh, I I appreciate that you know you are your preference is to select uh, go for sustainable hotel, but that's another challenge actually. I would like to uh, to yeah. highlight here because you know guest demand, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's still, uh, see, the word sustainability or the process uh, was there from long time. So, but now we start focusing more on sustainability uh, and how to be sustainable like that. But still in the in the whole uh, guests uh, who comes to UAE, yeah, they have their own demands. Like, so there, uh, a specific challenge what I want to, or to mention here is about let's let's take ac temperature so whether it is a voluntary standard or mandatory standard that is something really uh, important in this scenario because 
a lot of guests wants uh, the room temperature to be set at 18 19 you know the room <laughs> of, uh, yes so uh, when we when we speak about sustainability what is the uh, you know some some guests uh, they they support in a, for uh, 21 22 23 is okay for them but there is a set standard of 21 degree or 22 degree set by department of tourism but we are uh, prone to or we have to go with the guest demand you know in certain situations for example if it is a it's a banquet we have a ballroom and we are setting the temperature to 19 or 20 you know what will be the energy spent for that any event but on the same page i would like to say that you know there are situations like i have an event uh, uh, by uh, after two months uh, so there is there is a program. I mean it's it's good trend. Uh, I really like that you know that guess uh, it's an event of 350 uh, staff from their company and they are doing an event in our property and their demand is they want to know how much energy uh, they are using by having an event, uh, how much food wastage and all those things calculated to be given to them. And they want to do an activity in our hotel which will uh, uh, support in reducing the carbon emission so we offered them like uh, some options and they agreed to two uh, options like they are going to plant 30 trees in our property uh, uh, and then we will take care of the 30 trees and all these 300 uh, staff will bring clothes you know good clothes and we have Operation Smiley, uh, yeah. uh, we have a tie-up with Operation Smiley. And so uh, they come here and we take all these clothes which will be given to Operation Smiley. And I mean, this is a good trend. You know, this is something, you know, what they are, the guests, what they they make, they damage uh, provided or given to the, uh, with that event, they are trying to do something to, uh, you know, to support in the other side. So those guests are also there. So this is this one. I think this is the trend. And other than uh, I mean, uh, uh, Rodrigo has touched base on financial part, how to convince the ownership and all those things. But there also now uh, even the ownership or the brand itself, uh, when we are doing our FFNE or capex project for next ten years or five years, there is always a focus on thirty percent. All those investment, thirty percent uh, of those. <laughs> Uh, should be uh, supporting the sustainability. So that is also yeah. a good trend, actually. So we are moving forward, uh, but let's see. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm just, um, I find, yeah, I agree. And we're moving forward. Companies are um, educating the employees, you know, raising awareness. And um, it's really good. This particular company wants to have this event in your hotel like this. But I find funny that they do not agree to have their rooms 22 degrees or 23 still. <laughs> but anyway, I'm joking. I always find when I go to hotels in the UAE that I'm freezing. I always wear a jumper. Um, but I understand it's culture. And there are some people that live in the UAE that, you know, they don't, they like being cold. Um than you know than than others um i mean we are really running we have been an hour already i had another two questions um i'm going to which one was the economic benefits that you have seen for implementing sustainability plans uh, i don't know if any of you could say like quickly quickly yes or no if they have seen any clientele in the hotel that actually have chosen that hotel for the sustainability plans so at the moment they had to choose which hotel to go, they chose your hotel due to your sustainability plans. Have you um, or do you know about a, a, a customer or a clientele that has chosen your hotel because of your sustainability plans? No? See, normally, well, yeah. Normally, yeah. Uh, normally, if you look at uh, the group check-ins, like uh, we yeah. get a lot of group check-ins through the travel agents. Uh, the travel agents normally sends the questionnaires to the hotels, uh, whether they have the sustainability implementations. Uh, they look for the options. They look for like you no know, the safety. They look for the health, well-being. They look for the uh, like you no know, all the aspects. Uh, so once you scored uh, in the sustainability, 
and of course like you no know, travel agents sends their clients to the hotel who has um, uh, like you no know, sustainable program and environmental management system and and second thing is like if you look at uh, the trend set uh, like you no know, uh, now trend uh, like you no know, the trend set has been changed uh, now the customer like 80% customers like you know, if you look at the survey 80% of customer they are willing to stay in the more uh, like a sustainable implementations for this. So that is a good trend, but of course, like now we have to uh, comply with uh, customers' demand as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it has any, sorry, I just, um, have a problem with, um, and just quickly, as also for the interest of time, um, have you, any of your hotels got a certificate, sustainability certification? Um, like the um, any any certifications on sustainability. See, if you look at if you look at here in Dubai, like no very good thing we have in Dubai, like no we have the DTCM nineteen sustainability requirement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so once you once you comply with the nineteen requirement, automatically you get the sustainability certifications. So every year they come and do the audit, and also you will get to know about your carbon footprint emissions whether you are in best best uh, best in class or you you are right. good or you are poor so you get the rating as well and second thing is like we have the iso 14000 like uh, yeah. so which is the one of the uh, international standard uh, so we set the uh, like objectives under targets and kpi to achieve every year to review our uh, practices and the program in place. Yeah, um, but um, has any of you the rates? Do you already have the gold um, certificate Agreed. from or we, from the the Dubai we, Tourism Authority? Uh, no, for for its Carlton, uh, yeah. it's uh, we go for green key uh, certification. Okay. But when we take uh, Marriott as a company by twenty twenty three, all the Marriott properties in UAE end of twenty twenty three will be green key certified. This is a corporate okay. strategy. Perfect. Excellent. Great strategy. It, it works at uh, company level, many of the certificates. Uh, we have uh, in the social aspect, we have the, the Top Employers Institute as a good employer. Uh, we have the sustainability certificate from Dow Jones and the Standards and Pools also. They have a, a, a sustainability index and uh, we are the, the most sustainable hotel company last year. Okay, excellent. And finally, this question goes for, for all of you because we do the wrap up and maybe there are questions um, from the audience. But very quickly, you could give like two, three written words on one or one or two recommendations on how to start and implement ESG goals in the hospitality industry. How, because if I'm a small hotel chain and I have not even started or I'm starting or I'm having issues, like, one recommendation is, you know, for example, I, um, you know, have um, the executives and everybody on board, you know, all the change of command on board, or a recommendation is um, do a plan and with timeline and goals and revisit every six months. I don't know. I'm just giving examples, but just clear and concise recommendation. If you could give us any. I think that uh, the most important thing is uh, what you just said, the, 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 government, the governance, uh, because today, uh, before sustainability was about saving energy or uh, trying to put the client on the responsibility of not cleaning the towel or, or things like that. Today, it's a much wider topic. So I think that the most important thing is to have a framework, to have the top management involved and develop a, a code of conduct, a code of ethics and uh, policies on how do we conduct your, ourselves in terms of sustainability? Because otherwise, you, you will implement a few things, but then you will do others which are contrary to sustainability. So yeah. if you want to be consistent and, and be able to, to have in the future uh, a really effective, uh, sustainable uh, practices, you need to start by having this framework to, to not forget whenever you do something that you are uh, embracing the culture of the company uh, towards sustainability. Yeah, and, and I think the ESG framework and there are other frameworks really that derive from ESG gives you that, you know, like if you are lost, just go and revisit is, you know, you can find it everywhere and 
it will tell you on the social aspect because I think environment is easy for a lot of, as I said, you know, companies is like, oh, carbon footprint, energy, you yeah. know, and, and they just focus on that. But I think um, a lot of companies um, get a little lost on what the social means and sometimes on the governance means, you know, and, and if you visit the ESG goals and the questions that they have behind, you just keep, you can get a lot of tips on, on how to do it. Um, I'm going to check one second, in case if anyone um, wants to add something, whether we have any questions from the attendees. Um, it doesn't seem, um, I don't know if it's there. There is any questions from the attendees, is there? Hello, is there? I don't know, maybe she left. <laughs> no, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Oh, God, we are here. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I don't know. I'm on the well, side. Of I'm, uh -huh. having, I'm having technology issues, so I'm looking at my phone and my computer at the same time. No, we are like... here. Don't worry. <laughs> we are in the side of only this. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Do we have any questions from the attendees? I don't think so. No, no one. Oh, no, well, no. I would like to thank all of you for answering the questions, being part of this um, panel, online panelists webinar, I don't know how to describe it. Um, but takeaways are basically, um, you can be sustainable. If, if hotels are doing it, it's possible. Let's put it this way, right? And you can find ways and not all these ways will cost you money, right? There are different alternatives. Maybe it will cost you part of your savings, but not initial investment as we were talking about changing your AC units as, a, as or an alternative, or the panels, solar panels, or the vertical garden, or on the social part, how to involve your community, how when you are going to build a hotel, a new hotel, just start thinking about sustainability before you start putting the first brick. And I think carbon neutrality is important, but we shouldn't forget the social part. Um, and having all the stakeholders involved from employees to executives to government to customers and to suppliers. And thank you very much. I think maybe Marta wants to mention something now. No, um, just uh, say thank you, you to all of you. And it was really, really clear, all the information, really interesting. I think this is uh, the time of sustainability to talk about it. And so thank you so much and, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Bye. I'm going to take so. uh, Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you very much for organizing this wonderful webinar. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank you.